Deputy Secretary General of the Federation of Euro Asian Stock Exchanges. Today, my guest is Alex Pivavarsky, Head of Capital Market Development Team of EBRD. The team is a member of FEAS from uh, 2015 and uh, is very active in uh, FEAS activities. Today, we will try to understand the functions of the Capital Market Development Team and uh, the, uh, the future developments of it. Thanks, Alex, for joining me. My pleasure. Thank you. So where is the capital markets development team placed in EBRD structure and what are its main functions? The capital markets team in EBRD is located in our vice presidency for policy and partnerships. And that vice, vice presidency in turn uh, works hand in hand with our banking uh, team. So together we work closely on policy development and uh, supporting also product development in our countries of operations. Um, the team was set up following the great financial crisis of 2008-9, and uh, its original goal um, uh, was to help deepen the local financial markets and over time reduce dependence of those markets on foreign currency flows, inflows, and thus help make the local financial markets more resilient. As you probably recall, in 2008-9, when significant outflow, outflows happened at the same time, it became apparent that there is really critical need in developing local currency markets and local capital markets to make these flows perhaps less procyclical, less dramatic over time. Mm. And the main functions of the team include some analytical works on the capital markets. So we are expected to understand the markets and understand where they are moving and going and help determine priorities for their development. Um, we offer policy advice in our countries of operation to help develop institutions, infrastructure for capital markets and developing new products, new capital market products, supporting pilot transactions by our banking teams to help launch them in our markets. Some of those uh, transactions are not new to developed markets, uh, these products, but they are oftentimes new in our countries of operations and require capacity building, institutions, uh, legislation sometimes, so that they can uh, launch in our countries. And finally, we also do work on, on capacity building knowledge sharing. We work with other IFIs, organize various events, seminars, conversations on capital uh, market development. So it's a quite a broad range of activities overall. You as a team, um, the team before that uh, was called the local currency capital market. So two years ago in November, the DEBRD's board of directors approved five year strategy. Uh, have there been any adjustments in main pillars of this strategy caused by pandemic? Um, indeed, uh, we have a strategy, LC2 strategy, uh, which is intended to advance our local capital markets and local currency agenda for the bank as a whole. And uh, the strategy is for five years, 2019-2024, uh, and it remains very much relevant, including during the pandemic. Because um, the key elements of the strategy are to some extent aligned with what my team is doing. It is to help develop policies on the capital markets development, institutions, infrastructure, products. And if anything, the pandemic has highlighted once again the importance of local capital markets. For example, in the initial weeks of the crisis, there were significant outflows once again of capital from emerging financial markets. In fact, in the first several weeks, they were larger than during the great financial crisis. And uh, because of the major effort, lessons learned in 2008-9, the uh, significant injections of liquidity by global major players, this uh, market's very quickly stabilized. Uh, however, it became clear, clear once again that countries and companies that have been able to scale up dependence on local currency, more active in local capital markets, they uh, experience less turbulence um, uh, during this crisis uh, like they did in the past. Um, 
Okay, so you are on a strategy, on your five-year strategy, and good luck with um, managing it for the future years. What will be the key topics in capital market of uh, EBRD's countries of operation after the pandemic? Um, well, uh, the, after the pandemic, uh, um, there will be new topics that we see are rising on the global agenda, and some of them will be of relevance for our countries of operations as well. Um, well, apart from the general effort to deepen and broaden of the markets, there is uh, there are signs, very strong signs, that the financial and capital markets are likely to become greener. Uh, key regulators in um, uh, major uh, markets, including central banks, are um, more active in uh, their efforts to green the financial system. So there are various tools being used, including policy tools, um, including risk uh, perceptions, you know, uh, approaches to evaluating risks, uh, etc., that are likely to uh, lead to more attention being paid to the impact of the capital and financial markets on the environment. The other theme that's almost obvious probably during the pandemic, for example, we are speaking over Zoom, not, over, uh, not in person, unfortunately, at the moment, um, is digitalization. Uh, so uh, we have seen an explosion uh, in um, uh, shift of work, of uh, activities, of financial sector and capital markets uh, efforts in the, in the digitalization. And uh, we will expect uh, to see more of this over time. So more um, um, uh, proofing of the systems to potential shocks so that in the future we would hope to see a uh, more seamless and smooth transition if needed um, to digital uh, space and I think that there is also uh, just a greater awareness that digitalization is actually good and helpful for smooth fun smoother functioning of the capital markets. And it also has uh, certain benefits related to more inclusion in the capital markets, greater access to capital markets for people who maybe sometimes are not as uh, in included um, today. And finally, one trend, trend that we see um, just... Um, taking off in our region, and that is a new uh, interest in consolidation of the smaller markets with more developed capital markets. For example, recently, among uh, members of this association, the Armenia Stock Exchange has announced its partnership with the Warsaw Stock Exchange that would likely expect it to lead to consolidation over time that we at the EBRD hope to support. Let's uh, continue the topic of consolidation. What kind of support DBRD has in, in, in this deal of Warsaw Stock Exchange and Armenia Securities Exchange? And uh, how you see the future of this? Well, in general, we think it's a good sign uh, because Warsaw Stock Exchange has um, the experience in another emerging trans market country, the transition country that had, in a way, similar experience over the past decades to that of Armenia, which is where you know, Armenia Stock Exchange is located. And uh, so we feel that uh, this experience of transition will be helpful um, for, uh, for Armenia in this case, but also for other countries if this becomes a trend and there are similar experiences of consolidation with other um, larger, let's say, mid-sized uh, markets. Uh, we feel that the, there is a better maybe understanding of emerging markets and their needs in these uh, more advanced countries of operations of EBRD. Moreover, in the case of Warsaw Stock Exchange, because they are based in the EU, there are new trends in addition to what we discussed earlier, there are additional um, um, experiences that are emerging there related to the capital markets union. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's one of the, uh, uh, less maybe advanced areas of uh, EU's integration, the capital markets, and that area is taking off as well. So there is a lot more going on. There is a strategy for capital markets union in the EU. There is very there are various efforts, and so in a way, um, the Warsaw Stock Exchange could bring this new experience to the market in Armenia. 
So uh, how can we support this work? Well, we, of course, uh, apart from just welcoming it and uh, encouraging it in a way, we, we hope to support it by helping develop a strategy for post-consolidation work of the Armenia Stock Exchange. So we are in the process of discussing exactly how we can provide this support, what exactly is needed, but we generally are quite supportive and hope we can contribute as a team, as, a, an, as an institution. Uh, thank you for your contribution to this deal and good luck to, to our members, to you as a supporter and the Armenia Securities Exchange as a part of the deal to, to manage this and to have a future development. Uh, let's come back to some um, projects. So your team has launched some uh, projects amid the pandemic, such as the SME Research Initiative. Can you tell uh, about this initiative a bit and what are other initiatives to expect in 2021? Well, we are constantly thinking about new products and how we could support capital markets. SME Research Initiative, as you know, was uh, intended to help encourage capital markets uh, by supporting uh, research on specific companies in our countries of operations to increase awareness of these companies, but also perhaps it is a contribution to culture of capital markets. You know, this is a part of the capital market in advanced countries. Unfortunately, sometimes because of resource constraints, uh, this is uh, harder in our countries because markets are smaller. And so we uh, were, uh, as a pilot, were, helpful, were willing to support this type of uh, effort. Uh, as you know, uh, during the crisis, um, the listing of new companies has become a bit delayed sometimes or more difficult because of the turbulence and the situation uh, in the real economy. However, we hope that this type of work can have longer term positive impact and awareness building in our countries. So, uh, but we, you know, during the crisis, we, we were uh, uh, thinking more about what else can we do in the capital markets and our um, efforts are quite broad ranging. So for example, we are um, uh, working to support launching of uh, short-term commercial paper in the Baltic countries. So this is the market where this type of uh, CP type of um, instruments have not been present in the past. And we are uh, working with, the, uh, with those countries, but also as a bank to support issuance of those. Uh, uh, for example, over time, it turned out that uh, sometimes some of the larger companies in the certain markets find it more difficult to access short-term liquidity because of their size. And they may sometimes may be quite large partners of the banks in those countries, and they need additional uh, finance that the uh, banks sometimes are not able to provide, for example, for regulatory reasons. So we are uh, always exploring this and trying to find out, is there a need in some new instruments and can we support their development? As I mentioned already, greening, greening of the financial systems. So we are working on uh, some products, some of the advisory products, including with the stock exchanges to help them develop the capacity, uh, first of all, to function as a greener uh, in financial institutions set policies, internal policies and procedures, listing procedures, et cetera, to prepare for the post-crisis, we hope, uh, greener capital markets. Um, and as I mentioned to you also, we are supporting even uh, the consolidation of other um, um, efforts that revealed themselves during the crisis. So we are not necessarily doing this just because it's the crisis period and uh, we want to get everything sorted for the crisis only, we're also thinking what will happen following the crisis and what kind of areas will become dominant or of interest so that we can be better prepared for, post, for the post-crisis period. Yeah, better prepared, it means that you will have success. And um, yeah, about crisis and the challenges of uh, today's world, how are you keeping communication with your team? And how are you encouraging them to stay positive? Any special tips from you in these challenging times? <laughs> well, uh, we have, well, as a bank, we have moved more or less exclusively to remote working for this period. And it was quite a new challenge 
for us as an institution. And I, I feel personally that we've done reasonably well. So we moved re relatively smoothly to the remote working. Uh, we actually had, in terms of volumes of operations, they've increased because as you know, as a bank, we work, we are a counter-cyclical institution. So in a crisis, we often do more than in a, mm -hmm. a less turbulent period because it's uh, in part our mandate to support our clients and companies at the time when they need uh, support and they don't see it in the market. So actually we had um, in through the summer, uh, the busiest period uh, more or less in history and the volumes were really uh, very high. So of course that created some pressures uh, in a way for, the, for all of us because uh, remote working is not easy. Um, and uh, sometimes there are technological challenges or internet connections are not great. And in my personal case, I also had to begin to lead a new team, the capital markets department of, at the EBRD in the middle of the pandemic. And uh, uh, I had not seen a significant proportion of my team in person since I started as the head of the team in July. So that for me is quite a new challenge. I never experienced this before. And so we had to find ways to be connected and spend quite a lot of time um, you know, getting to know each other through Zoom, through WebEx, through other online platforms. Um, we do, you know, we have regular team meetings. We use the technology to, to catch up, to do catch ups, have sometimes smaller uh, brainstorms and conversations uh, as a team and had to learn to work with our clients, including governments uh, in the countries of operations through virtual uh, tools. Um, um, I guess um, maybe of some interest to other members and others out there uh, is that uh, we have uh, learned also that in this time of crisis, we try to encourage, we need to try to encourage each other to remain also active and healthy, take some rest. And as a team, for example, we start, uh, started uh, uh, on one of the sports apps, a team uh, group. Uh, and uh, for example, this month, we're encouraging each other as a team to reach 200 hours of physical activity during my, the month of November. So we are also doing that as a team and try to remain uh, active and support each other and encourage each other. So really, it's a range of activities. I think it uh, has been better than expected, reasonably well, but we need to be constantly mindful that uh, as the winter gets darker, you know, uh, days get shorter, that we need to make sure we all can uh, take some time off, go for a walk and, uh, you know, not be connected every single minute. Yeah, I, I like that sport activity. Um, and uh, yeah, challenging times are bringing uh, new skills. And I hope these new skills will be useful for the future. And the very last question. Uh, in your personal opinion, what uh, life will look like after the COVID uh, pandemic and what are the major challenges that humanity will face? This is a very interesting question and it definitely goes beyond the capital markets, although, of course, uh, to some extent it is all connected. Um, well, uh, I think that the pandemic has confirmed how interconnected uh, we all are, uh, given the speed and breadth of the virus spread, how quickly it affected uh, basically the whole world, it shows that we are much smaller than maybe we felt. It also showed that, um, you know, we are quite interdependent and that this interdependence in a way has grown over time because of the, uh, and it goes beyond our immediate communities and our families. So uh, I believe that in a day-to-day -day life, there will be some changes for the better. Uh, so uh, we, for example, uh, now it is more accepted that uh, we should be able to work more flexibly and be able to spend more time with our families uh, rather than be always available. So I think that there will be more remote working over time, more flexible working, uh, in particular in professions where, where it is feasible. You know, mm -hmm. I would say people, most people uh, working in the capital markets probably could expect to work more uh, flexibly over time. There will probably be more uh, spread of digital technology, including to support collaboration. Like we've seen an explosion in this and the quality of this has improved so much even in the last half a year. Um, uh, as the governments 
will need to uh, stimulate the economies over time. There will be um, this question we already touched upon of the impact of economic activity on the environment. Uh, it will not go away. So there is uh, a lot of discussions about how can we uh, spend on infrastructure on other government expenditure post the crisis to build better economies, greener economies with less impact on the environment. Um, and of course, at the EBRD, it's very much in our blood, um, uh, some of these topics, and uh, we hope that they will um, uh, help us to become even more um, effective in our countries of operations. For example, just some weeks ago, our board approved a new second green economy transition strategy. And so starting next year, we will be expected to see 50% of all of our operations have a green component. So the, the impact of, um, on, of greening of the financial system is very much um, direct on, on, the, on the BRD, first of all. We also uh, will uh, continue to work on ensuring uh, that finance and access to finance is more inclusive. So this is a, another very important uh, major uh, theme. So to make sure women, uh, people in regions, remote regions, um, those who have sometimes youth uh, in some countries, that they can have access to finance uh, when they need it on fair terms. Um, we, of course, also will be supporting digitalization, not only in the financial sector, because uh, it's a broader theme, but we will... Uh, be working in that area as, as well. So I hope that in a few years time or uh, not many from now when we speak and reflect on this period of time uh, when um, you know we live through this pandemic, we would feel that it helped launch more positive trends in the world that we all were happy about. Let's hope. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much. Thanks.